Hello, my name is Dave Ferguson. And as the lead pastor of Community Christian Church, I want to be the first to welcome you to Community Online. I'm here to let you know that myself and our staff, we would love the opportunity to care for you and equip you on your spiritual journey, no matter where you're joining us from. We can do that through our locations in Chicagoland, and we can also do that online. But to do that, we have to know each other. So if you're new to community, welcome. We're thrilled you're joining us. The best way for you to let us know you're here is by checking in. Take a moment and use your camera app to scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in the chat and a member of our team will connect with you this week. Let's get to know each other. Check in so we can learn your name and reach out to you in the next couple days. Now, one of the ways we care for you is by praying for you. Don't go through stuff on your own. Reach out for prayer anytime by texting PRAY to 331-226-1686 or by clicking on the prayer button. Our prayer team is standing by and would love to pray for you. As your pastor, if there's anything I can do to help you grow spiritually or take your next steps here at Community, I'd like to encourage you to reach out directly to me. That's my email right there. It'll come directly to me. I told you, I really want to get to know you. Here at Community, we are passionate about helping you find your way back to God. And today's experience is designed to do just that. So let's do that right now together.
Merry Christmas, everyone. I'm so glad you are joining us for Community Online. My name is Tammy Melchin, and I would love to get to know your name. That's why I want to invite you to check in using our community app or by scanning the QR code on the screen. This simple step is so important because following Jesus is something we're meant to do together. We want to know you and walk alongside you on your spiritual journey. So let us know that you are here. And if you're new, welcome. Checking in is the best first step to get connected here at Community. Check in and we'll connect with you this week. When you check in, you will also have access to our digital program, The Community Weekly, where you can find out about everything happening at Community, including the times for our Christmas Eve services. We would love for you to celebrate Christmas with us at one of our Chicagoland locations or right here on Community Online. We'll have services streaming online at 4, 5, 6, and 11.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, or join us on demand at any time. I also want to challenge you. Who can you invite to join you this year? Whether you're planning to attend in person or online, there are people in your life who need to experience the wonder and the hope of Jesus. Let's all reach out to a neighbor, friend, coworker, or family member and invite them to join us December 23rd or 24th to celebrate Christmas. You can find all the information about Christmas Eve service times on our Christmas page at christmaswithcommunity.org. If you have kids, you can also find a link on that Christmas page to a special Kid City Christmas in your living room experience. Let me share a little preview of that experience with you. We're going to have the first ever living room scavenger hunt. I just can't travel without my stuffed moose. Never leave home without him. I hope everybody's got their favorite pillow because I got mine. It's so soft and fluffy. Now, whoever has their flashlight, turn it on and make the light shine all over the place. I hope your family will check it out. Again, you can find all the information about Christmas with Community on our Christmas page at christmaswithcommunity.org. I also need to let you know that next Sunday, December 26th, our entire church family will be celebrating together here at Community Online. That's right, for next Sunday only, we will not have in-person services. Instead, we're inviting everyone to stay in their PJs, grab some hot chocolate, and join us online for services. I hope to see you there. In a few minutes, we are going to welcome a special guest to bring us the next message in our Christmas series. Daniel Yang is the director of the SEND Institute, which is based in Wheaton College's Billy Graham Center. He is also part of a church planning team here in the Chicago area called the Prodigal Network. Daniel is a friend to many at Community, and we're excited to have him share with us today. But first, let's take a moment to give back to God. December is the month of generosity. We have the opportunity to celebrate the extravagant gift that God gave us in Jesus by honoring him with our tithes and offerings. The gifts that we bring during this time go to furthering his mission of helping people find their way back to God. Would you join me right now in giving back to God? You can give through the community app or by texting the word GIVE to 331-226-1686 or by scanning the QR code below. You can also send a check to our mailing address in Naperville. And as we give, Let's hear from Lincoln Park attenders Troy and Rachel Dury in today's Be the Church moment. Um, my name is Rachel. This is my husband, Troy, and we've been attending community in Lincoln Park for about three years now. So we got married September 5th, uh, 2021. So literally just about three months ago. Generosity had always been something that, and we both did individually, but hadn't really talked about with each other really until until kind of we got engaged and started having those, you know, more in-depth conversations. Living in the city, it's a very expensive place to try to navigate. 
Once we got married though, it became this thing that we could do together, um, which I feel like has been kind of fun to be honest, um, just to like be able to steward our resources well together. I think one thing we all probably learned in the past year and a half is there's gonna be a lot of unexpected stuff coming towards you. You know, the storm, the storm's always gonna come, but um, you know, God, God is our rock that we can build our house on. And I think through our giving, being able to provide that for other people um, and just in our local community here and then through, you know, the other organizations uh, community partners with, just being able to be that for other people who might need that, you know, more than we do right now. We believe that everything we've been given is a blessing and we are called to steward those blessings well, especially in Chicago. You're surrounded by a million people all the time, and yet it's so easy to feel so lonely. And I know like both of us experienced um, such a connection through the church that got us connected to the city. Being able to, to, to shine you know, God's love and, and be there to show people that, that they're not alone and that, that you know, God is working even in the midst of, in the midst of the storm.
Hey, Merry Christmas community. My name's Daniel Yang, and I'm honored to be a part of your church gathering today. I'm friends with many of your pastors and leaders, and I appreciate so much what you all are doing here in Chicagoland and beyond. In my day job, I direct the Send Institute out of the Wheaton College Billy Graham Center, but also I'm a part of a church planning team here called the Prodigal Network. Now, I come bearing good news and bad news. The good news is that Christmas is only about a week away. The bad news is that some of you only have about a week to find that perfect Christmas gift for that special someone, so it's time to get a move on. Now, how many of you would consider yourself to be a good gift giver? I mean, not me. I'm, I'm, I pretty much strike out most, uh, most years. A few years ago, for a family white elephant game, I bought the most useless gift ever. A super cheap manual blow it up yourself, four inches thin twin size mattress. And as luck would have it, uh, and no, we're not supposed to believe in luck, but guess who got stuck with that gift in the end? Me, it was traumatic. So I wanna save you the hassle and help you this year with your last minute shopping. Now, we did a little research to find out the most popular items on wish lists this year. And according to the National Retail Foundation, the third most wished for gift is books and other media. 35% of gift givers says, hey, you know, I, I'd take that. So I'd be happy with a book, a subscription, some kind of streaming service. The second most wished for gift is clothing and accessories with 52% of us wanting that gift. So my guess is that the other half of us were done receiving long underwear and ugly sweaters. Now, what do you think is the most wished for Christmas gift this season? Christmas gift cards. Yeah, 59% of us just want the gift card. Basically, the majority of folks are saying, hey, you're terrible at buying gifts. Just, just give me the stinking card. I'll do it myself. It's hard finding that perfect gift, but today I wanna to talk to you about a gift that you can give every person that you know, and if they received it, it'd be exactly what they wanted. It's the gift of belonging. Most of us just wanna to belong to something. We wanna to belong to someone, not just to fit in, but we wanna be seen, we wanna be known, to feel that we're accepted and valued for who we are, even for our bumps and our quirks, and even despite our failures. Everyone longs for a connection, and yet so many people struggle to find it. In fact, the sheer number of people who don't have a sense of belonging, that's led experts to call this a loneliness epidemic. You probably know that the pandemic led to increased isolation and feelings of loneliness, but the issue of loneliness was already a big part of our culture way before 2020. In fact, a 2018 study of 20,000 adults revealed that nearly half of Americans report sometimes or always feeling alone. That's almost every other person that you encounter. That means that some view watching right now have felt lonely. Maybe you feel lonely right now in this moment. Everyone feels lonely sometimes, but some of us feel it in greater degrees than others. Even those who seem to have it all together, the folks who have fame and notoriety, they still talk about feeling lonely. For example, Joss Whedon, he directed the Avengers film. He said, loneliness is about the scariest thing out there. You can even see how that was a huge theme in the movie. Some of you might be fans of the actress uh, Anne Hathaway. I mean, someone famous like her even says, loneliness is my least favorite thing about life. The thing that I'm most worried about is just being alone without anybody to care for or someone who will care for me. And then there is Albert Einstein. He famously wrote, it is strange to be known so universally and yet to be so lonely. Some of you feel alone but you're not alone in feeling alone. In fact, it's so pervasive that human beings even took it with us into space. In the 70s, NASA launched the twin spacecraft Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, and their mission was to take pictures of the furthest reaches of the solar system. And when they sent out the spacecraft, it was equipped with a recording of a human heartbeat and a piece of music, the Cavatina movement from Opus 130 by Beethoven. And this was a message from us human beings on earth to anyone and anything out there in the universe who might be listening. In fact, they're still out there. And if you were some lonely alien trekking across the universe, if you came across Voyager 1 or 2, you would hear this. Annie Druin was the creative director for this project. And when she was asked why they chose this specific piece of music to transmit, she talked about how Beethoven had written the German word for longing, all in the margins of this beautiful but sad sounding song. Right now, even as I speak, Voyagers 1 and 2 are carrying with them all throughout the universe this audio representation of the human desire for connection and belonging. And for so many people, the holidays are the loneliest times of the year. 
even at a crowded store or at a super fun Christmas party, we can often have that nagging sense of disconnect from people all around us because just being with people isn't the same as being seen and being known. But folks, this is why Jesus came. At Christmas, we celebrate the wonder of God coming to be with us when Jesus comes into our world the same way as all of us came into the world as infants, God becomes so we could belong. And the Apostle John captured the immensity of this wonder. And I love how Eugene Peterson translates what John writes in John 1.14. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. Jesus became God with us and the world has never been the same. He came so that you and I could receive the gift of belonging. And today I wanna help us see that, but also I wanna help us feel this reality by sharing the story of how Jesus turned one lonely woman's world upside down. The story is found in John chapter four, and it begins with Jesus deciding to take a long road trip from Jerusalem back to his hometown in Galilee. And on this journey, he comes to a town in Samaria called Sychar, and Jesus is tired. He was definitely physically tired from walking because it was at least a 31 mile journey on foot. I'm not sure if Jesus was an introvert or not, but I can imagine how tired he'd be with 12 other guys constantly hanging around him nonstop, 31 whole miles talking, complaining, asking questions the whole time. Uh, that's like every introvert's nightmare. I, I imagine a van road trip and Jesus is, he, he's trying to sleep. Peter's constantly asking, hey, what miracle are we gonna do next? John, the youngest, is constantly asking, hey, are we there yet? Maybe use the bathroom. Then there's Thomas, the daughter, saying, hey, I don't think this is the right way. <laughs> and then James, uh, he called the son of thunder. He's yelling at everyone, hey, shut up. And then there's Simon the Zealot, the revolutionary. He's literally, he's literally, he's saying, I'm gonna kill everybody. So you can almost wonder when Jesus, he reaches sidecar and he sends all the 12 guys, says, hey, you all just get some food, leave me alone. And one of the poor guys just wants to have some peace and quiet to himself. Whatever it is that Jesus is feeling, he's, he sits by himself and he's alone by the water well and uh, maybe he's recharging. And so he's sitting there and a woman who's from around town comes to draw water. It's not obvious to us, but John, who's actually writing this, he's purposely laying out a really, really odd scene. Normally a woman from around town would uh, travel early in the morning together in groups to get the water. But this lady, she came by herself. And it was later in the day, uh, the hottest time of the day, the hardest time to run this errand. And then uh, the fact that this lady comes to draw water alone suggests that she probably wanted to avoid the other woman or that she had some kind of reputation around town. Uh, you ever have some sort of like regular routine you purposely do because you're trying to avoid people? Uh, have you ever had somebody, you just felt like they were developing a routine just to purposely avoid you? And it's, that's, a, that's a terrible feeling. And I'm sorry if you've ever felt that way, but. That's kind of what this lady was feeling. It reminds me of a classmate I had uh, from middle school. He didn't uh, have a lot of friends, uh, mainly because he, he smelled funny. Uh, he didn't bathe or brush his teeth regularly, so uh, people avoided him. And uh, we all made sure to get in lunch, um, you know, in the line for lunch, either before or after him. And the people just never uh, sat with him during lunch. And from a distance, uh, they'd laugh at him, make jokes. And uh, I'm really, really embarrassed that uh, I made fun of him too. And so um, I'm just, you know, really, really sorry that I wasn't courageous enough to befriend him because uh, when we all returned to the eighth grade after uh, that summer, uh, he did not. During summer break while visiting his aunt, he, uh, he jumped off a bridge into a river and uh, ended his life. And I wish someone would have uh, been there with him on that bridge that summer. I hate that he uh, was alone. I don't know if the lady John was writing about ever had similar thoughts to my middle school classmate, but whatever it was that she was feeling, whatever it was that she was thinking, uh, like Jesus was there with her and he definitely sensed this loneliness about her. This woman comes across this strange and tired man sitting by the well, and probably to her shock, instead of avoiding her like everybody else, he strikes up a conversation. And you've probably uh, maybe heard this story at some point. Uh, and you might know that uh, by Jesus speaking to her, he was committing a taboo, uh, breaking some cultural norm. It's pretty clear from her response uh, that he was doing that because she says to Jesus, you are a Jew, I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? In those days, there was a lot of tension between Jewish people and the Samaritans. 
They just didn't associate with each other. And culturally, a Jewish man, he actually, they would rarely speak to a woman in public that they didn't know. In fact, Jesus, like engaging her in a conversation could have easily been interpreted as him flirting with her. But also, you see, the Jews viewed the Samaritans as having heretical teachings uh, of the Old Testament. So they really didn't respect them in general. But as the conversation goes on, it's revealed that Jesus has some unique insight into this woman's life. It was really out of the blue to her. And then Jesus asked her to do something that was really strange. He asked her to go and get her husband. She says to Jesus, I don't have a husband. And instead of backing off, you know, Jesus says that thing at a party when the rest of us are watching and we're like, Jesus, don't go there. Jesus, do not go there. She is not ready for this conversation. Just let her alone, Jesus. But that's the thing about Jesus. He's not afraid to go into the places where we won't let others enter. And he's not afraid to pry, even in the places that we're hiding. So Jesus throws away all the social norms. He does a really socially awkward thing and he calls you out. He says, yeah, I know. I know you don't have a husband because you actually have five of them. And there are different views of what Jesus meant by this. Some scholars think that it reveals the woman's kind of scandalous history, which could explain why the other woman in town didn't want to be around her. Other scholars think that uh, it could have been that uh, this woman was whittled five times over. And if that were the case, it may have been her grief that led her to pull away in isolation. But whatever the situation was, what I want us to notice is this, that Jesus sees her. Jesus sees her. He knows her in a way that others don't know her. And being seen, being known in this way can turn a person's world upside down. If you're feeling alone this Christmas, uh, know that God who became flesh and blood in the person of Jesus, he sees you today too. He knows you the way that no one else knows you. He wants to turn your world upside down because he knows you from the inside out. He knows you from the inside out. Look what happens next in the story. Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? Think about what's happening here. I mean, these were the people that she was avoiding. They were people that were shunning her or people that she had shunned. But now she's got some renewed courage to go back and tell them a story. She essentially says, hey, I met a man. And they probably are like, hey, uh, yeah, what's new? You've, you've had five, six, like who cares about your seventh? She says, no, no, I, I met a man. Who knows me? He really knows me. And they probably say, hey, lady, there's a lot of Johns here that know you. And she says, no, no, you don't get it. Like she, he's peeled back the layers. He sees my bumps, my quirks. He knows my failures. He knows me. He sees me. He sees me better than you see me. He sees me better than I see me. And there is something remarkable about the energy that she was bringing to them because they listened to her. Not only did they listen to her, but they believed her. And not only did they believe her, but they eventually believed Jesus. Scripture says that many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. As I'm thinking through this scene in my head, I see Jesus spending a few uh, days in Sychar as the talk of the town. Like everybody wants to be near him. Everyone wants to hear the words that he's saying. Everybody wants to be seen by Jesus too. Like they come out of hiding because Jesus allowed this woman to come out of hiding. And there she is right in the center of it all. And the people then tell her, we no longer believe just because what you said, now we've heard for ourselves. And we know that this man really is the savior of the world. And the way this passage ends is, uh, is worth reflecting on. Here's a woman who a matter of hours before had been a social outcast, utterly alone. Every day she carried around this baggage of her past, made sure that she had to schedule her day and her life to avoid being around those who might stare at her and shame her. But now she becomes the first person to carry the good news about Jesus to the Samaritan people. She testifies that he's the Messiah. And when they come to see Jesus for themselves, the, the chains of stale religion break off and they feel seen by the real God of the universe. And her encounter with Jesus not only transforms her relationship with God, but it transforms her relationship with the people in her community. No more isolation, no more lonely trips to the well. And because of Jesus, the one who was once an outcast can now receive the gift of belonging. 
Folks, I'm in this really weird tension right now where I, I shared uh, in passing with you a sacred story from my life about a, a young boy from my childhood who uh, took his own life because he couldn't deal with, uh, with loneliness. Um, and I don't, I don't know how you're making the connection between uh, his story and then the story of this woman that Jesus met. It almost seems unfair that uh, Jesus like didn't meet him at the bridge the way that he met her at the well. Uh, and I try not to carry this guilt uh, as a Jesus follower. I try to carry his story as a legacy and, uh, and even as a lesson. You see, regardless of the degree of belief or disbelief we have in God or any religion, you and I have a capacity to be courageous and to be something to someone else who feels like they have no one else. And it's hard to accept that Jesus is the Son of God for some of us. And, but you can at least accept that what Jesus was doing was he was just being a decent human being to people who couldn't, he couldn't stand to see other human beings suffer in isolation and loneliness. And just this bit of realization about who Jesus is, like it draws me to him. And it makes me wanna be like him. And it makes me want to be loved by him. And it makes me want to love like him, uh, just like he loved this woman that he met. Jesus offered the gift of belonging to the woman he met at the well. And uh, you can offer the gift of belonging to others at their wells and at their bridges, at the school lunch tables, in the executive boardrooms, in the quietness of their solo Christmas gathering this year. When we offer the gift of belonging, uh, belonging to God in the same way that Jesus offered the gift of belonging, this is what we're saying to a lonely world. We're saying that God made a way for you to live in a right relationship with him, but also with others. God adopts you as his beloved. He's your loving father. You have a family. Uh, you belong to him for eternity. You belong to each other in a kingdom community. And many of us have been living solo lives, disconnected from God and from others. And perhaps it seems that the loneliness you feel is just, it's always gonna be there. And maybe you feel misunderstood or unheard, like Voyager uh, 1 and 2. You might feel as if you're traveling alone in space, carrying this message of longing and hope for connection. But that doesn't have to be your story. The gift of belonging is for you. And the gift of belonging is something that you can offer to other people around you. When that gift is accepted, like people become a part of a community learning to follow the way of Jesus, a community made up of people who are being transformed by the love and the hope of Jesus, people who are learning about what it means to be seen, to be known, to find true connection. And I, I'm so glad that churches like Community uh, provide these kinds of environments and spaces like, uh, like your small groups. As I mentioned before, my family and I are part of a small group of people planting a church. And I, I love big groups and I love the crowds, but I could not imagine doing life this past year without this small group of people that I call my church. It happens not just Sundays, but it happens every day. And small groups are that place where they can be, where people from all walks of life come together to find biblical community and to grow deeper in their faith. And there are so many stories of that here at this church community. Uh, check out this one uh, of Kim, who found belonging through her small group. My name is Kim, and I've been attending community for a little over a year. I had moved into the area six months prior to the pandemic, and I hadn't really found a church home. And how do you find a church home during a pandemic? Everything was still very much online. There was no in-person anything. And so I, was, I started just watching services online. Then the church says, hey, we're opening up. I said, put me wherever you need me. So then Usher is where I was and I enjoyed it. And the next Sunday, Tim and I meet. And so I was like, so tell me about small groups and everything. He said, well, you can join my small group. I was like, really? It was so wonderful because we're all around the same age. And even though this group of people, for the most part, have known each other, it seems like forever. I didn't feel like I was new. This time last year, I had COVID. When I had COVID, I had these debilitating headaches. It had some very uh, traumatic lasting effects that um, happened over time. There was a period of time where I could not even really talk. 
at all. The pain was so bad, I couldn't communicate. I couldn't get the words out of my head. It messed with my cognitive abilities, impacted my ability to work, my ability to think. I can't really drive distances. I'm sad. I'm sad, if I'm honest. But, yeah. So, during this time, I couldn't um, care for myself in a lot of ways. And so, small group, like going to the doctor, getting food, just being there, doing all of those things. I moved out here away from everybody. And without my small group, I would have been on my own. But I wasn't. I've been homesick since June. So that means that in that short period of time, I somehow got family. I feel like I belong. I got people, I got people, like friends at community, my small group, my friends on the ushers and different people who call me when I was in need and I have been in need, community has shown up for me. And I just got here. Because of community and small group, I had a family and I didn't have to go through this alone. I, I love Kim's story because it gives us a glimpse of how things are meant to be. Uh, those are the same things I'm experiencing in our missional community at my church, and it's what so many others are experiencing in small groups here at Community. Friends, something significant happens when we uh, don't keep Jesus' gift of belonging to ourselves. And this is the time of the year to just like to give love away. At Christmas, we know that often, you know, like the feeling of giving something away is so much better than receiving. And that's exactly what the woman who met Jesus did at the well. Uh, Jesus saw her. He knows the story of her life. He saw her struggles and her joys. And she uh, asked him big questions about faith. And then he responds by giving her a gift greater than uh, the gift that she could have ever, any, any gift that she could have ever imagined. But then she wasn't like, she wasn't content to keep the gift to herself. When the woman returns to her village, she tells a story about her encounter with Jesus and it opens up the door for other people to receive the gift of belonging. Uh, they too could be seen and known by Jesus. They too could experience the living God. And because this one woman shared this gift that she received with others, their worlds were turned upside down too. As much as I can help it for as long as I can, I never want to live life in a way where I ignore people around me, especially those that are desperate for God. Because no matter how many bumps someone has, no matter how many quirks or failures they have, the gift of belonging is for everyone. And we have the opportunity to give that same gift away. Who in your life needs the gift of belonging? It might be a neighbor who's spending the holidays alone this year, the coworker whose life experiences and family of origin are very different from yours, uh, or it could be that family member that you've not spoken to since the 2020 elections. Like offering the gift of belonging can be, again, like, it could be so simple. You can just text somebody, write a note to say hello, give an invitation to dinner, just listening to someone's story standing in line with them when no one else will. And together we can, we can offer belonging to a lonely world and help people find their way back to God. Remember uh, when the Samaritan woman uh, returned to her people, she said, come see a man who told me uh, everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? Come see. Uh, when the people in the woman's village encountered Jesus, their lives changed forever. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. And because of her testimony and her invitation to come and see, the people in the woman's village had a life-changing encounter with the savior of the world. And we have the opportunity to introduce people to the savior of the world, just like her. The one who helps the lonely find belonging, 
who brings healing to the hurting, who adopts people into his family, the one who brings hope and peace and justice, Jesus, the Savior of the world. In a few days, a community is celebrating Jesus' birth together. Christmas at community. It's a, it's a wonderful time for you to invite someone to come and to see and to hear the good news of Jesus, either in person in any one of the locations or in a 3C community or on community online. There's someone in your life that needs the gift of belonging. And like the woman Jesus met at the well, would you invite our town to come and see? And my prayer for this Christmas is that the lonely, would find belonging. But I also pray that you and I would let Jesus turn our world upside down. In a few moments, we're gonna continue to celebrate the Savior of the world by celebrating communion together. As we prepare for that, imagine what it was like the first time Jesus experienced this moment with his disciples. There they were, huddled together in an upper room, They had been through a lot over the past few years, the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. Jesus knew that their time together was coming to an end, that he would soon be arrested and crucified. And so what did he do? He gathered them around a table to receive the bread and the wine. We too have been through a lot over the past few years, But today, Jesus is doing the same thing he did all those years ago. He is inviting us to the table to share in the bread and the wine. We belong with him. We belong together. Let's prepare our hearts to receive him. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. He is present among us and we belong. 
Let's remember his death and resurrection as we receive the bread, a reminder of his body that was broken for us. and the cup, a reminder of his blood that was shed for us. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for the reminders that you've given us today. Jesus, that you came to be with us and that no matter how we might be feeling, even if in this moment we feel a sense of loneliness we know the truth, that we belong. God, I pray for every one of us that as we move forward from here, that we would sense your presence with us, that we will sense that we belong. It's in your name we pray, amen. Today, may we embrace the gift that Jesus has given us, the gift of belonging. And may we also give that gift of belonging to the people in our lives. Let's take Daniel up on his challenge and ask God to show us ways we can offer belonging to those around us, especially those who may feel alone this Christmas. Let's be the church in a world that is desperately in need of love. I look forward to celebrating Christmas together later this week. Don't forget to check out christmaswithcommunity.org for all the Christmas Eve service times. Merry Christmas, community. I'm so glad you joined us today, and I pray that God met you in a meaningful and powerful way. If you're new, remember to check in so we can connect with you. You've already taken your first step, and we want to help you figure out what's next. Everything you need to take your next steps here at Community can be found at communitychristian.info. We would love to help you connect through a small group or by joining a team. We have in-person and online options for both, or if you found your way back to God, we'd love to help you take your next step by getting baptized. Don't hesitate. Take the next step today. And we'll see you right back here next week for Community Online.